hey, what's up? So I've been tweaking this bun recipe since like 2012. I originally developed it as a lunch burger bun recipe with my chef at the time, Andrew Zimmerman at Sepia Restaurant in Chicago. Shout out to Andrew, by the way, he's still saved in my phone under just chef. Anyways, there's been about five official iterations of this recipe, including like three on this channel, but I never really got it dialed into what I would consider to be a perfect bun. So I went to retool the recipe one more time, and this time I actually turned to the dark side to use a product that I used to think was cheating, but it turns out it was the missing link. To get started, I'll grab my stand mixer, and into the bowl of that, I'll measure 200 grams of warm water, 70 grams of sugar, one large egg, 75 grams of melted but not hot butter, eight grams of instant yeast, and yes, this is more than double the yeast that I've used in past recipes, but I learned now that a quick dumb fermentation, especially when paired with what's next, yields a softer, squishier product. Behind the yeast, I'll add in 15 grams of dough conditioner. Let me tell you, when I was a professional bread baker, I used to think this stuff was absolute heresy and only used by hacks who wanted to make dumb industrial style bread. Well, it turns out that the perfect burger bun is indeed a dumb industrial style bread. And if you're wondering, hey, Bri, what does dough conditioner even do? Well, I think of it like a multivitamin or like anabolic steroids for my dough. It speeds up the proofing time, it fortifies the gluten structure, it improves caramelization in the oven and compensates for any quality differences in different brands of flour. Basically, it allows you to jam a lot more of the enrichment into the dough, like butter and potatoes that make it taste good without having to sacrifice any of the squish. Of course, you could go natty here and make a great bun at home without steroids, but if you want the squishiest, airiest, and lightest bun known to the home cook, I recommend giving DC a try. I'll link to this stuff specifically down in the description. Behind that, I'll add in 150 grams of riced mashed potato. To get the potato into this state, I peeled one large russet potato, but Yukon Gold would also work. Then I double wrapped it in foil, loaded it into a 425F oven to roast for one hour. Then I pulled it out, and as you can see, it's 100% tender. Undercooked potatoes here will make this dough very gummy, so beware. From there, I used my potato ricer to make it nice and smooth, and there we go, 150 grams goes into the bowl. Behind the potato, I'll add in 625 grams of strong all-purpose flour, and then finally 12 grams of salt. Now the dough hook goes on, and I'll mix this on medium speed for eight to 10 minutes. Yes, that is a decent bit longer than I would normally mix hearth bread or pizza dough, but there's a lot of butter, potato, and sugar in this dough. Those are also known as enrichments, and just like for brioche, enrichments weaken gluten. Even with dough conditioner in there, it's gonna take a little while to get this whole thing strengthened up. I'll mention that once this dough is all combined, it's going to go through a teething phase in the middle where it actually looks like it's getting more slack and sticky. That's going to be around the four to five minute mark. Push through that for another couple of minutes and after about 10 minutes on medium speed, this dough should be a clean cohesive mass that's easily clearing the bowl. To check for doneness, of course, I'm going to use the trusty old tug test. As you can see with some forceful tugging, there's no shearing or tearing, but it's a touch sticky. Not for long though. Next, I'm gonna flip this dough into a medium bowl and then come back with a wet hand around it into a nice tight ball. Once it's all tucked up, you can see that pretty much all stickiness is gone because the gluten is very well organized at this point. From here, the lid goes on and I'll ferment it on the counter for 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, this thing has gassed up a lot. The extra yeast and conditioner in there are definitely doing their job. Now I'm gonna do something I don't usually do for most breads. That's aggressively degas the dough. There's gonna be plenty of opportunity to capture more gas later on. For now, I need to flatten this out so that I can give it a proper strength building fold. To do that, I'll grab a grip of the dough, pull it out till I meet resistance, then fold it back over. I'll do the same on the opposite side, then the two other sides. Next, I'll grab a corner and flip the dough so that it's sitting on those folded seams that I just made, and then I'll repeat the 10 to two rounding move from before to get the dough tucked back into a nice tight ball. The lid goes back on and I'll check back in 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, this dough has regassed itself and is looking super buoyant and alive. From here, I'll flip this dough out onto my cutting board and then again, aggressively punch it down to degas it. Next, I'll grab my scale and then cut this dough down into 12 100 gram size pieces. Once I've got this dough cut up into 12s like this, I'm gonna grab a sheet tray lined with parchment paper and give it a quick spray with pan spray so that I can move these dough balls around if needed. I'll set that aside, then grab a piece of dough and then very lightly dust my cutting board. To shape these, I'll de 
degas this dough one more time because large bubbles will lead to voids and collapse after proofing. And next I'll pull out both sides, fold them over each other like this, and then I'll flip the dough onto that seam and then use my palm, fingertips, and thumb to roll this into a very tight little ball. I use the rounding move along with the cutting board to create tension on the dough and then use my fingertips to tuck that tension into a seam on the bottom side. And there we go. I'm gonna move this over to the sheet tray, then I'll do the rest. Boop, 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 boop. By the way, I'm only gonna be showing you guys six of the 12 buns moving forward because it's just easier to film. If you're making all 12, just do the same times two. Next, I'm gonna proof up these buns. To do that, I'll spritz them down with some water to make sure they don't dry out, and then I'll cover them with a damp towel. By the way, make sure the room or space that they're proofing in is nice and warm, at least 76 to 80 F. I'll check back on these in 60 to 90 minutes. That's the perfect amount of time to crush some weights in the gym, all thanks to Future, the sponsor of this video. Future is a fit fitness app that connects you with an online personal trainer who sends you workouts, monitors your performance, and messages you to keep you motivated. I started my future membership about nine months ago with a video call with my trainer, Kyle. We talked about all of my fitness goals and what I do and do not like doing in the gym, and from there, he developed a custom workout plan based on that conversation. A typical day in my plan includes some kind of compound movement like squats, bench press, or deadlifts, and then I move into an accessory block with dumbbells where I do more focused single muscle stuff and functional movements. Kyle keeps it interesting though and changes it up weekly for me. The exercises and weights specifically change every day. To keep me motivated and to provide feedback on my progress, Kyle and I are constantly chatting back and forth through the app. I can message him anytime with questions or photos of my developing six pack. Also, you don't need access to a gym to use Future. Your trainer can develop a plan for you to reach your goals based on whatever gear you have access to. So if you want a workout plan that's built for you and keeps you motivated, go to tryfuture.co slash Brian Lagerstrom to try your first month for just $19. That's cheaper than most gym memberships. Again, go to tryfuture.co slash Brian Lagerstrom to try Future for $19. Thank you, Future. After about 75 minutes of proofing in a nice warm environment, these rolls have grown by about three times. I know it's not over or underproofed when the dough takes a nice gentle poke and sends it back slowly like this. Before I bake these, I'm gonna hit them with a few brushes of egg wash to bring a nice shine. To make this egg wash, I just combined one egg and a generous splash of water and then stirred to combine. But if you wanted to take it a step further, use an immersion blender to break the egg whites down further. That's gonna make brushing a lot easier and will prevent any egg buildup on the bottom of the bun. Once all my buns are nicely glossed up with the wash, I'm gonna move them over to a 400F 205C oven to bake for 15 to 18 minutes, of course, depending on the temperature of your oven. Before I seal these up, I'll hit the inside of the box with a dozen or so squirts of water to create a little steam and to help these buns rise even more. Cut to that fun oven spring footage. That never gets old. After the first seven minutes or so, I'll come back and rotate the tray because the front of my oven is much hotter than the back for some reason. And there we go. I'll close this up and bake for another seven to 10 minutes or until these are deeply golden brown. After about 16 minutes in total, these buns are looking great. So I'm gonna pull them out so that we can take a closer look. As you can see, uh, yeah, that looks real sick. These are dark but not crusty, and that's thanks to both the sugar in the dough and the extra malted barley flour in the dough conditioner. Now to take these from very good to great, I'm gonna grab a little melted butter and lightly brush it on the outsides. This is of course gonna give these a touch of butteriness, but the water inside of the butter is also gonna soften the outside of the bun, and that's gonna make it much more squishy. And there we go, you guys, this is a freaking miracle bun. It's super rich from the butter and potato, but also super light and just so soft. Honestly, as is without anything inside, this is an amazingly delicious thing to snack on. It's super tender, but also somehow has a pleasant chewiness to it. It's luxurious, but in balance and it's perfect. I mean, I'm not really a hyperbolist, but I'll say it. This is a perfect burger bun made at home. Speaking of burgers, I'm working on a crispy, thick, well done style burger. Do not at me, well done burgers can be super good when made with care. And I used this bun to test that out. A little onion and tomato on top and to finish a little squish with some burger sauce and the top bun. Um, Yeah, that is a juicy burger and it's well done. I'm excited to share that recipe soon. To summarize, this bun is perfect and I think you should make it soon. Please subscribe to this channel if you liked this video. Let's. Eat this thing!